Alrighty then. Well, <laughs> good morning. There's Rocky over there on the table. Hmm. Yeah. Good morning. Anyway, um, there's a phenomena or a, a norm in society or whatever. I don't know how to, how to describe it exactly, but it's something I've picked up on. And over the years, and it's the thing of people in certain positions being able to commit crimes that would land people in lower positions in prison. You know, a police officer being able to do something that would put me behind bars, even for the rest of my life, potentially. A politician being able to do something that would put me behind bars for the rest of my life, and so on, you know. Basically, um, the way that people of a certain rank or a certain position or a certain occupation uh, can commit crime and get away with it. And believe me, I've seen police officers do things that I know I'd go to prison for a very long time. If I did the same things under the same circumstances, I would be put away for a long time. I've seen police officers commit serious crimes. Um, we have politicians committing serious crimes. Um... In my hometown of Perth, Ontario, Canada, there was a man, there were two families that owned, okay, Rocky, there were two families that owned um, most of the town. The town was carved up between the Cranes and the Perkinses. Whatever the Perkinses didn't own, the Cranes owned. In fact, the Cranes owned the building I lived in for 28 years, uh, where I, when I lived above the Royal Bank in Perth, they owned that building. They don't own it anymore. It's been sold since I left there, but they did own it. Anyway, and, um, you know, I, they, they did a lot of things. Like the, the children, the, the sons did a lot of things. Of that family did things that um, would have landed most of us in prison, and they got away with it. One of the sons, he was actually a... Um, he was actually the one that we had to deal with for our rentals and everything. He was running the building. And I've talked about him before on different videos. There was one time, he and back in the 1980s, he was running a speedboat up and down a lake and doing so in a reckless manner. And people were getting off the lake because they were afraid, you know, because of an accident or whatever happening. And... um Anyway, he ended up, there were a couple of fishermen in a rowboat who didn't get off the lake. And he ended up, he run his speedboat over top of their rowboat, cut the rowboat in half, and killed both men. Both men died. And there was an inquiry into it. He wasn't criminally prosecuted or anything for doing it. And there was an inquiry into it. And the judge at the inquiry said that those men were the offers of their own misfortune because they should have gotten off the lake like everybody else did when they saw him operating his, 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 his vessel um, recklessly. So it was their own fault. They died, basically, and he was blameless. That's what the judge said. Now imagine if I went downtown in my car and I started driving up onto the sidewalk and mowing down pedestrians. Imagine if I did that, and um, people saw that I was driving recklessly and they were getting off the sidewalk, but I still managed to kill a few people who, for whatever reason, didn't get off the sidewalk or weren't quick enough to get off the sidewalk or whatever. And, you know, what judge would say that those people were victims of their own stupidity and that I was blameless in that. You know, they'd throw the book at me. I'd, I'd probably be thrown into some hole somewhere and I'd never get out. And really, I'd deserve that. If I did something like that, I would be deserving of that. Like, I'm not saying I should be allowed to do these things. I'm just saying that 
it seems like there's a law for for certain people and a different law for other people and like the lives of those two men because they were just average regular working class joes weren't worth as much as the life of um as 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 the the recreational pursuits of a a, a millionaire I feel another tick underneath his chin there. I hope it's also dead. Usually when I find them right now, they're dead. But I don't know. Let me, let me, I'm going to put the phone down for a second here. I have to have a look. I'm sorry. I know it's a pain. You have to forgive me. Okay, back up, Rocky, so I can look, okay? Please. Please let me look here. Yeah, see, he crowds me and then I can't see. I'm really sorry about the thing here okay i think that's also dead yep that's another dead one the treatment does work that i that he's getting anyway the flea treatment does work anyway the, here here's the thing though here's the thing i'm rubbing him on his head again see i am kind to him it's just that i needed to back him off so i could have a look and make sure the thing was dead um anyway here's the thing i figured something out because, like I say, I've seen police officers commit serious crimes and get away with it. I've seen people with a lot of money from certain families commit serious crimes and get away from it. Um, the fellow who um, owned half the town, Joe Perkins, um, I remember one time, this was back in the 80s too, he was driving really fast down a dirt road, down one of the back country roads around Perth, and he ran through a stop sign in his Cadillac. He had a new Cadillac at the time. Ran through the, ran through a stop sign, and he T-boned a Chev Caprice. You know, a big old Chev Caprice. And the Chev Caprice had a farmer and his wife in it. And the, the man and his wife were both killed. Just Cadillac just cut right through that Chev Caprice and killed both occupants of, of it. You know, the farmer and his wife. Cat fur. Anyway, um, Joe Perkins got a $700 fine. He at least was prosecuted, unlike Bentley Crane, but he got a $700, what it was when he cut the rowboat in half with his speedboat, but uh, Joe Perkins, he got a $700 fine. And Joe Perkins was known not to pay his bills, and I remember when I read that in the paper, my, my comment was, yeah, and he probably won't even pay it, you know, because he never paid his bills, Joe Perkins. He was known for that. But um, anyway, bottom line is, you know, d different rules for different people. Anybody else that did that, you know, would be in a world of trouble. You know, run through a stop, driving way too fast, not paying attention, driving through a stop sign and killing two people. Just cutting a Chev Caprice in half and killing the occupants, a man and his wife, you know. But again, see, that, that, that farmer and his wife, their two lives combined were not regarded as being worth as much as um as joe perkins um well-being and peace of mind you know you don't want to stress the 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 the, the, the millionaire out basically you know, you know putting him through a, you know put, putting him through hell because he killed two people through his own negligence and stupidity but they wouldn't think twice about st stressing the rest of us out, putting us through that. And like I say, rightly so, if we do something like that, we should have to face the consequences for doing it. You know, I mean, but, you know, it's a pretty serious thing to take two lives. But the thing is, those two people are just as dead now as they would be if they got hit by a poor person and killed a poor person that was driving recklessly and not paying proper attention and, and, and hit them. You know, they're just as dead. Their families 
their family is just as is, is sad to have lost them. You know, their families are grieving. You know, it, it doesn't make it any better for their loved ones that they were at least killed by a millionaire. You know, they're not going to take any solace in that. There's not going to, they're not going to take any comfort from that. But again, they don't matter. That's the thing. This is this is the system we're living under. It's an evil system. But what I have figured out, anyway... Now, look, I'm not saying that people in my position should be allowed to commit crimes. I want to make that clear, because I know that's how it's going to come across. I'm not saying, oh, poor me. I can't go out and commit criminal act and commit criminal acts and get away with it. I don't think I should be able to commit criminal acts and get away with them. But what I have noticed is that people actually do not go to jail for committing crimes. If I commit a crime, I won't go to jail for committing a crime. And the reason I say that is because I know that there are other people in this society that could do the exact same thing under the exact same circumstances, and um, they wouldn't have to go to jail. So it isn't for committing a crime that you go to jail. Any more than, say, a doctor practicing medicine goes to jail for practicing medicine. What a doctor practicing medicine, or what, what somebody practicing medicine would go to jail for would be practicing medicine without a license. That's a crime. If you're not a doctor, but you pass yourself off as one and you try to practice medicine, that, that's a chargeable offense and you, you can be jailed for that. Well, I think that being of a certain position in society or having certain credentials, like a, like a law officer's badge, for example, in, the, in society, those things are a license to engage in criminal activity. So those of us who go to jail, if we engage in criminal activity, we're not going to jail because we robbed somebody or because we beat somebody or because we drove recklessly or we drove well impaired or because we, um, you know, raped somebody or murdered somebody. We're going to jail for practicing crime without a license. And virtually everybody in jail is in jail for practicing crime without a license. There's only one charge, really. It may, they may take different forms, but in the end there's only one charge that's laid, and that is a charge of practicing crime without a license. If you're licensed to commit crime, like a police officer is, or like a millionaire is, or like certain other people are, then you can commit crime. Um, I once had a real bad run-in with a cop in Ottawa, and that cop was a hardened criminal. He was. He was a criminal. And, um, he perjured himself, you know, which is a serious crime. If you're poor and you get caught perjuring yourself, you go to jail. Um, he actually was, really, he was guilty of contempt of court because he was, the whole time that I was testifying... He was stomping his foot on the floor and saying over and over again in a loud voice over top of me, he's lying, he's lying, which actually he should have been censured by the judge for doing that. And I wasn't lying anyway. It was him that had lied. In fact, he had just finished perjuring himself before I gave my testimony. So he was actually the one who was lying, but he accused me of lying. Um... That same cop, there was video of him after that. He had pulled over a, about a couple of weeks after I had my run-in with him. I saw him on the news. He pulled over a black fellow and his girlfriend. And the girlfriend, I started making a video with her cell phone because he was beating up the black guy. And what it was is this black man had a really nice car, an expensive car. And he pulled him over because he saw him driving an expensive car. And because he was a black man, he decided that he had either stolen the car or he had, he had obtained it through criminal means, like he had bought it with money from, from dealing or pimping or theft or something. Well, that wasn't true. That guy owned the car legitimately. He just had a really good job. 
he had a really good job. He got he got paid really well, and it was a legitimate job. He had every right to have that car. That was his car that he bought with his wages from his work, and his work was legitimate. It was just he had he had a good paying job. He was he 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 was well compensated for his legit his legal legitimate work. And he had chosen to buy an expensive car, which he had every right to do with his money. You know, and he shouldn't have been falsely accused. But this cop, the cop's name was Paul Sharon. I'm going to say his name. I don't care. I'll say his name. He's a sergeant, I think, now. At least he was the last I heard of him. But anyway, a fellow by the name of Paul Sharon with the Ottawa Police Department, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, and um, anyway, he, this fellow, because he told the guy, because the girlfriend was recording it, and so it was actually played on the news, which is surprising. In Canada, usually the news, the the news is very um, deferential, deferential, deferential to authority. But they actually did play the video that the girlfriend had made, and anyway, he kept quizzing the black guy out as to where he got the car. And he told him, it's my car. Showed him the paperwork and everything. You know, pre pre proved that it was his car. It wasn't stolen. So then Sharon says, well, there's no way an N... Can't say the word on YouTube, and I probably shouldn't say it anyway, so I'll just say, there's no way an N... You know what I mean when I say N. You know what word I'm talking about. Uh, could afford a car like this unless he's obtained it through money that he got through crime. Well, that isn't true. And in this guy's case, it definitely wasn't true. It was his wages from his legitimate job, as I said earlier. He was just a very well-paid person. I don't know what he did for a living, but his job was legitimate, and it paid well. Anyway... Bottom line is, he hadn't stolen the car, and he hadn't obtained it with funds that he got through criminal activity. He had the car legitimately, but the cop kept insisting that he must be involved in crime because he's black, and he has this car that a black man shouldn't be able to afford, according to Paul Sharon. Well, the guy, now being, being called an N, you know, and being accused falsely, of, of stealing the car and then being accused of criminal activity, he said to Sharon, he said, I would like your badge number. And Sharon started thumping him around. And the girlfriend's recording all this. Sharon started thumping him around, getting up in his face, thumping him around. And he said, you want my badge number? You want my badge number? He said, my badge number is 666, as he's thumping him around. Um, you know, anyway, the girlfriend was recording it. He saw the girlfriend with the phone, and he went over, and he thumped the girlfriend around, and he knocked the phone out of her hand and broke it. He stomped on it. But the video inside did survive. Of course, it stopped recording at that point, but the video did survive, and um, it ended up on the news. Nothing happened. The guy's still a cop. I guarantee you... If I were to confront anybody like that and treat them that way and beat them up and beat their girlfriend up and destroy their girlfriend's property, I'd be in jail. You can't do things like that if you're me or if you're anybody on the lower end of the, of the ladder. You can't do that. And the fact, if I were to call that man an N-word... Again, that would be considered an aggravating factor. I'd serve more time even than I would had I not used that word. But um, anyway, Paul Sharon, no, he got away with it. So like I say, but you see, he was committing crime with a license. He's a licensed criminal. And that's what it is. I, I on the other hand, if I commit crime, I'm an unlicensed criminal. So if I commit a crime, I won't go to jail for committing that crime because somebody with a license to commit crime could do the exact same thing under the exact same circumstance and wouldn't have to go to jail. So it wouldn't be for committing the crime I would go to jail. It would be for committing the crime 
while not licensed to commit crime. That's what it would be. And that's the thing. All the people are sitting all the people sitting in jail right now, they're not in jail for robbing people or raping people or murdering people or beating people or perjuring themselves in court or theft. They're in jail for doing those things when they had when they were not licensed to do them. That's what it is. Because there's all kinds of people in this society every day doing those same things. And they're not going to jail. But the difference is, they, they, they are, basically they have a license to, be, to, to engage in criminal activity. Due to their position, or due to who they are, or due to where they come from, or whatever. Anyway, it's not right, but it's just all part of living in a fallen world. We know we're living in a fallen world. Um, we know that Lucifer pretty much runs it at this point. God permits it. Nothing happens that God doesn't permit. God is always in control, and God can shut it down whenever he chooses to, and he is going to choose to. Uh, we know that, that, you know, the time is coming, probably sooner than later, when God will actually shut it down. And then we'll have his system, and under his system, everybody will be equal. And, you know, the guy that pushes a broom around will be no better will be no better or worse than the police officer, you know. And um, the police officer will be no better or worse than the guy who pushes a broom. But we're not there yet, anyway. And, um, unfortunately, we are living in a corrupt and fallen world. And so things that don't make sense and things that are unfair and unjust are the norm. That's about it. You know, everything's backwards. Everything's upside down. Um, things that make no sense are accepted as reasonable and sensible and so on. That That's just how it is anyway. God, my teeth look bad, don't they? Ah, terrible. Anyway, bottom line is this. There are people in this society who are licensed to commit crime. And there are people who aren't. And if you're one of those who aren't, you're going to jail if you commit a crime. But if you're one of those who's licensed to commit crime, I guess fill your boots and act on your very worst impulses. You know, just live out your very worst desires. Do whatever you want. But bear in mind, there's a, be there's a bigger and a better judge than any judge sitting on a bench in our society. A judge sitting on a bench in our society will let the police officer or the millionaire away with a lot of stuff. But, you know, God doesn't judge us by our, by our job or our bank account. He goes by the contents of our hearts. And if you're a black-hearted SOB... God knows it, and he'll deal with that when the time comes, when he decides the time will come. So in the end, there ain't nobody getting away with anything. You know, and that Paul Sharon there that did what he did to me, and that's done what he's done to so many other people, and he's been protected by this corrupt system while he's done it, God will deal with him. And God will deal with him fairly and justly. And I don't know what that means. I mean, in my opinion, he should be punished. But I'm a human being, I, and I don't, I'm no better than him, really. So I'm not, it's not for me to say what should happen to him. I'm saying what my personal opinion is. But I recognize that my personal opinion has no bearing on anything where God is concerned. Because compared to God, I'm a fool. You know, God is so much smarter and wiser than I am. And God knows things I don't know. So God may not, may not judge Paul Sharon as harshly as I think he should. And whatever God decides, that would be the right thing and the just thing, whether, I, whether I'm sitting here now thinking that it should be a certain way or, and then God decides it should be different or not. Because ultimately God knows, God knows and I don't know. So, you know, God, God will deal with it in his own way, and whatever he does will be fair and just. And the same is true for all of us. God's going to deal with all of us in his own way. 
and whatever he decides where each of us concer is concerned about would be the proper decision. You know? So, I mean, anyway, bottom line is there's a better judge coming and a more just judge and a judge who can't be bought or influenced with stupid stuff like the judges in we have in our system can be. And, um, yeah, he's going he's gonna to deal with everything anyway. And in the end, his judgments are final. There's no appeal. And his judgments are just. There's no reason for an appeal because whatever he decides is how it should be. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, we're living in a backward world. What can I say? It won't always be this way, though. Have hope. Have faith. It's not always going to be this way. We talk to you later.